It was, uh, it was, a, it was a very, very inspiring um, experience for everybody in the audience, but yeah. for me particularly. And, yeah. you know, for a few reasons. Number one, that a sitting president of any country in the right. world, much less the G8, mm. France, would come to Lagos, and not only come to Lagos, mm. but come to the shrine. I know. Because of what the shrine represents. Right. You know, like, the shrine was built in honor of Fela, who's arguably our greatest musician of all time. Of all time. But Fela stood for so much mm. against, you know, the struggle against oppression, against mm -hmm. bad governance, mm -hmm. against the, you know, he stood for the plight of the people. Right. And that Macron would accept that invitation to come to the shrine. That alone, that he came, was, it was inspiring. And then he himself yeah. is an inspiring guy. I mean, he's barely 40 years old, yes. and he's the president of and France. And you interviewed him as well, yes, right? I what asked, did you get out of him? And so this is what I asked him. I said, and because people know me, and they know that I'm passionate about Nigeria and right. about young people caring again. Mm. And I asked him, you know, what did he think about young people, you know, should they participate in politics sure. and why? And he basically transmit, transmitted what I expected, which mm. is that we have to care, man. Like, Nigeria's destiny is in the hands of its young people only if we care about it enough to get involved. Like, we, if we don't get involved, the punishment for not being involved in politics mm. is that you'll be ruled by your inferiors. Correct. You'll be ruled by fools or right. thieves or, you know, so... And I think Plato, somebody said that, but it always stuck with me. And it's like, every country has the leadership that it deserves. Mm. Nigeria is where we are because we deserve the leaders that we have. Right. And I'm not just talking about this administration, I'm talking about in history. Mm -hmm. So until we realize, until we as a, the younger generation get together and say, okay, you know what? We care again. You know, we're, we're just so numb. We're so used to the problems of the country. So it's just bad news after bad news. And it's normal for us, but it shouldn't be. Like, yeah. Nigeria shouldn't have the most number of children out of school in the world. I know, and he pressed on security in Nigeria. Listen, and he pressed on that as, like, one of the most important things to get fixed here. Yes, it's mm -hmm. security, education. Like, we, we spend, as a country, we spend 70% of our budget on recurrent expenditure, on right. running the government. We spend 70% of the money that we have as mm. a country on running the government. Right. So what's left? to fight for security? What's left to invest in education? What's exactly. left to fight for unemployment? What's yeah. left for all of these things? Like, and this is why we're stuck in this race where we're basically, it's as a country, like a we're chasing our yes. tail. It's like a revolving problem. I was telling somebody that, you know, this whole event at the Shrine, right? Mm -hmm. Shrine was built in honor of Fela. We've all heard Fela's music. Right. If you play a Fela song today, it will sound like he wrote it last week. Right. That's amazing. Something that was written in the 70s. Yeah, well, the issues that he's talking about, mm -hmm. it, he could have written so it today. So it's yeah, more of the issues, correct? So it, it means like we're not, we're not progressing mm -hmm. like, as a country. Like, you know, and, and, and I don't want to sound like it's all doom and gloom because mm -hmm. Nigeria is an amazing place. Mm -hmm. it, it's the reason I have a career. Right. It's the reason I'm here. It's the reason you're here. It's the yes. reason all of this is here. Yes, yes, yes. So on the one hand, it's, it's fascinating and it's beautiful and it's exciting and it's vibrant and it's full of talent and creativity and culture. But on the other hand, it needs to be better for everybody. Like, the average Nigerian lives on less than a dollar a day. So do you think that his visit resonated on anyone? Like, do you think it made any kind of change so far? Listen, and you like... know, he, the thing about change, especially yeah. when you're talking about big institutions, is yes. that big wheels tend to turn slow. So mm -hmm. things don't... It doesn't happen overnight. Right. What needs to happen is, like, little drops of water need to make an ocean. Right. So maybe his visits inspired some young people to say, you know right. what, if this guy at 40 is the president of right. France, then maybe I should be doing better. But you know maybe what I, I should also be doing think? More. I also think, yes, I also think these types of conversations should be ongoing and not just a one-off. Absolutely. Need one leader that Absolutely. can just keep talking about these same issues Absolutely. over and over and over again. Absolutely. We're going to talk about some of your passions later, but okay. on a lighter note... Okay, yes, let's, yes, let's come I, back. I hear that you have a new movie coming out. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, uh, I just finished filming. We just wrapped filming on a movie called Up North. Yes. Uh, it's um, produced by Anakli Films. I'm the lead actor, and I'm also one of the executive producers. Okay. It's directed by Tokbe Oshi, okay. who's phenomenal and brilliant. And um, so we're in post-production now, and I'm very mm -hmm. excited about it for a few reasons. So the movie is about, you know, this young man who's kind of spoiled and rich and he lives abroad spending yeah. daddy's money. And so... Uh, where are you guys shooting? Where, we what's your location? We okay, Lagos. Okay. Um, so he, he, his, his dad kind of 
cuts off his money and bring, drags him back home because he wants him to run the family business. Yeah. And to punish his rebellious behavior, his dad sends him for NYSE camp in Bauchi. Okay. So we actually went to Bauchi for three weeks. Oh, and wow. then, Have you so been? Have you been? I went. That's where okay. I shot. We first shot. Time in first time. First okay, time. Very nice. So, so the movie is about, you know, it's a love story about, you know, the love between a man and a woman, uh, a man and his family, okay. a man in his environment. But, and, and a coming of age story of how he grows up to become a man and to decide what he wants for himself and to go after those things. Okay. But on the flip side of it, it's also, it also speaks a lot about Nigeria mm. because he gets to the north and he starts working for this girl's school and he, you know, he, he takes this team, you know, this girl's this talented running team, but also about like what we have as a country, mm. right? Our human resources, right. the, the girl child, children, schools, education, oh, wow. but it also talks about tourism. Mm. Because the interesting thing is, I've gone for safaris in Kenya, in South Africa. That's the reason a I asked. Amazing, I yes. amazing experiences, right. right? Do you know that we have those same animals here in yes. Bauchi? Yes, like I know. We have, I, I saw giraffes <laughs> in front of me. Like it was the most mind-blowing thing. And you have all that in, in because the Because we film, have it here. Right? But, oh, but so you see, we're, as a country, we're struggling with unemployment. Yes. But we have a tourism industry that's dormant. It's like... We have people who travel from all over the world to Kenya to see the same animals that are sitting there in Bauchi. And the saddest thing to me is that as a country, the things that have lasted are the things that God created and maintained. The animals themselves are fine. They're glorious, they're majestic, they're exotic, they're beautiful. No issues. The warm spring in Bauchi is still there. It's as beautiful as it was 100 years ago. But everything else around has, has, dilapidated. has, has yeah. dilapidated, has yes. degraded, has... You know, you, you get to some places and it's just like... So, and so, that, so that's, as a country, we need to start thinking about those things. We need to start thinking about the things that matter. Yeah. We need to think about unemployment and how tourism is a viable way to provide jobs for people and to attract investment into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. we, you, you go to Kenya and South Africa, their whole, it, their whole economy in Kenya is, is basically mm -hmm. tourism. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the things that's that we have. That's just one of the parts. So when is when is this movie coming out? This one that you have. Um, so it's we're we're editing now. I want to say it'll be either be towards the end of this year or yeah. the beginning of next year. So we're gonna see you play another love role. A love well, scene. no, this is a so lot. I actually a lot heard more... that your first movie was the wedding party. Yes. I didn't even know that. Yes. I thought that you were an actor before. Well, so I had I had done like Jacob's Cross. Yeah. I done MTV Sugar. I had done things. And, and when I was in school, I used to like write plays yeah. and direct plays and yeah, act yeah, yeah. and all of that. But my first lead role was the wedding party. So Very this is my nice. second lead role. Well, uh, and I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, um, Kanayo is in the film. Oh, yeah. Wait, Kanayo, uh, the Auntie guy Hilda. running for politics Yes, right he's, now? he's in the you film. You guys have a Auntie lot of Hilda things Hilda is in, in the film. You know uh, Michelle what we're going Dede. to do? We're going to come back on set and we're okay. going to discuss a lot of topics that you're really passionate okay, about. Okay, cool. Sounds and good. so uh, tell us, where can um, people find this information on the movie? Or um, is it on you your social media If you go to my social page? media, yeah. Banky Wellington, in, yeah. on Instagram, Banky W on Twitter, you'll see it. But we also have an um, uh, Instagram page for the film called Up North The Film. Perfect. So you can go see some scenery, some pictures. See really how beautiful your country is. Can't because wait Because it really is it. gorgeous. As we at Trace, because I was part of the yeah, event, yeah, yeah, yeah. as we showed, yes. um, I think that there's a lot of potential for the, the relationship between Africa and France and Europe in general. Yes. And, I, and I think that it's a fantastic, great thing that that's coming to the forefront, that mm. we have these relationships with France, with the government, to open doors for a, an exchange of culture, an exchange of revenue, an exchange of ideas. And that's a beautiful thing because the world is becoming a smaller mm -hmm. place. I also, however, think that as Africans, we need to look inwards. Yes. I think Most that we... That Africa needs to be the one to save itself. Nigeria needs to be the one to save itself. So we shouldn't always just be looking. I'm not saying there's anything yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah, that, yeah, sure. but I think that we should, as a country and as a continent, we should be looking inwards. Say, listen, in Nigeria, we have 200 million people. We have to do this for ourselves. The, mm. No country or government outside is going to come in and fix us. Mm. We have to be the ones to fix, us, fix ourselves. We have to be the ones to play the roles that are needed to be part of the progress that we yeah, want to I see. Yeah, and I think Macron actually said, said that, 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 that we need to do said, yes. things for Africans, said, yeah. by Africans, yes. correct? Yeah. And say so here's, here's like the what I would say, point. the starting point right, right. now, today. Um, INEC has just announced that um, the new date yeah. for you, if you haven't registered for a uh, voter's card ever before, if right. you've never registered for one, 
your, your last opportunity to register for one before the next election is August 17th, yeah. right? So they've, they've, that's the new deadline. Mm -hmm. So you have less than a month. Less than a month, If you've guys. never gotten your voter's card to get month. it. And, and I talk to young people all the time. Most of the time I'm in a room and I say, oh, how many people have their voter's card? Yeah. It's, it's usually like a small percentage. No, it's so serious. When my girlfriends and I go out and have drinks or something, and we even talk to the waiters, do you have a PVC? Do yeah. you have a PVC? Do yes. you have a PVC? This and, is what we all have to do. And here's the thing with that. A lot of times, the number one complaint I get yes. when people say, oh, I'm not going to register to vote, right. is they say, oh, I don't like any of the candidates. I don't know who I want to vote for, so I'm not going to bother. Yeah. And I say that... That basically means that you are willing to give your voice away because you yes, don't yet know what exactly, you want to say. Exactly, exactly. You know, don't give it away because yeah. you don't know what you say. Mm -hmm. At least be part of the number so that if you decide later at some point that you want to be, just get it first. Get it first and then let's all sit down together and say, okay, this makes sense yes. or that doesn't make sense. But if yes. you don't get it, you're not even part of the conversation and they have no reason to answer 100%. to you. I'll say this last thing. Yes, go ahead. Some of the issues, we were talking earlier about Fela's music yes, right. and how the issues have been the same since the 70s. They're mm -hmm. the same or worse, right? I, I'll give you an example of an issue that affects young people, SARS, yeah. SARS, mm -hmm. the police force. Mm -hmm. You know, the, some okay. on, like, really evil members you of the what, police. Banky, you know what, have I'm no going time. To, I'm going to have you come back on the set. Get your voters' card. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, just, Get your voters' card. Okay, go on, go on, so, go on, go on. No, so just finish this, finish this me, whole conversation. Okay, let me just finish this, 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 this whole thing real quick. Yes. So, it is a, I, I personally feel that it is uh -huh. a disgrace to us as a country mm -hmm. that a certain group, I'm not saying the whole police force is bad, but a certain group of them are yes. beating and killing and yes. extorting young yes. people. But why hasn't there been like a massive investigation into these stories? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's no political will to say, oh, this is affecting young people. Yeah. Be a part of the movement. Be a part, Be a part of, of the, the change that you want to see. Be and a part of the progress.